Laughter is the best medicine. Find out how. If you like this video, share and subscribe to our channel. We use creative means to take the messages of peace across. So that's our work. With so, that, Shini, uh, I thought we could begin. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. why um, Why don't we dig straight into the subject? Sure. So um, what can be more serious? Do you think there's anything more serious than nuclear bombs? No, nuclear bombs and nuclear war is one of the biggest threats to peace imaginable. And there's lots of books and lots of articles that have been written about the subject. Yeah, but uh, how many people read those? No, some people do, and I'm sure some people in this Zoom call do, but most people don't, let's be honest. So how do we take the message of peace uh, to most and not just the some who read the books? Well, we have to find a more creative way to get the message out. Yes, I agree. Uh, do you remember the, that time in the late 90s when uh, India and Pakistan tested their nuclear bombs? Yeah, who could forget that time? <laughs> yeah. Do you have yeah. something creative to say about that time? Actually, I do. I do have something creative, uh, but you'll have to break out the guitar. So let's okay. stand up and show them what we can do. So that song, why was that song so important? The song was important because it addresses one of the key ways in which, one of the key ways in which we can, uh, people are drawn to hate. So uh, when we look at this, when we, when we started making that song, we found that uh, the youth especially were being drawn to these kind of um, emotional arguments for hate. So people were saying, okay, uh, India is becoming superpower. Pakistan is becoming superpower. And people were getting swept up, especially young people. So we found a way to um, make that a little funny and to take it a little bit over the top and to appeal to people's emotional sentiments, right? So that's one of the key ways in which people are drawn to hate is through emotional, for emotional reasons. And there the are, youngsters especially, uh, yeah. they get drawn into it because, you know, they don't have jobs, there's insecurity and they get drawn to, uh, to war and hate. So this, this particular stanza we sang was appealing to the youth. Right. And the, the song has uh, everything that we're presenting here. We're presenting very short versions of it just because of time constraints. You can go on our YouTube channel and see full versions of most of what we're going to present today. So the second thing, um, the second reason that people get drawn to these politics of hate um, is that the facts are being hidden or misinformation is being spread by those in power. And we'll give examples for each of these. Right now, I just want to sort of give an outline of the whole presentation. Um, the third thing is that uh, some governments may make false promises. And I think we've all seen the case. We just had Donald Trump in the US. 
We've all seen the case of corrupt politicians who come to power campaigning against corruption, right? <laughs> there's no way that they're going to end corruption, right? But this is what they this is what they pretend to do. The fourth thing is that for cultural reasons, um, we may be taught to uh, hate the other as a cultural norm. What does that mean? In peace studies, we talk about othering, right? So we talk about who is a member of my tribe or my community and who is not. And that other person has less rights by virtue of not being part of the group, right? Again, we'll talk more about this in a little bit. And lastly, there can just be outright fabrication. Now here, I mean, not just fabrication in terms of telling lies, all of these involve telling lies in some sense, but specifically making up a false history, something that didn't actually exist and saying that, that this false history is why something that may or may not have happened hundreds of years ago justifies what I have to do today, yeah. right? So these are the five reasons that people are drawn to hate. Um, and before I go any further, I'm just wondering if we could see, if you have your video on, maybe you could show me hands. Um, I'll stop the screen share for a second. Um, you can raise your hands if you like, or you can um, just, you can raise your hands using the, the Zoom function too, if you know how to do that. Or just write in chat. Or just write in the chat. Has anyone been in an argument on Facebook or on uh, Twitter or somewhere else with someone who, um, you know, was Islamophobic, someone who was bigoted, someone who was racist? Has anyone been in, ar in an argument like that on Facebook or, or uh, any kind of social media? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Hari says yes, Hari Chakyar. Anyone else had the experience of um, having a fight on? Uh, yes, okay, we have a couple of people raising hands. Mithali and Mrigunk. Uh, Bala Krishnaji, yes, fantastic. Okay, now keep your hand up, but only if you've been able to convince the person that you've been in an argument with through logic, through reason, you've been able to stop them being Islamophobic or whatever it is that they're doing. Were you able to succeed in that? If not, you can lower your hand. Or you can type no in the chat if you were able to succeed in that. So right? do facts and logic always work is the question. <laughs> Couldn't reason, Couldn't reason with, with them. them, says Hariji. Okay. So, so basically people are saying no. Yeah. They couldn't use reason and logic to change people's minds. So why is that the case? When we ask that question, we have to understand how human beings work, right? And in short, we have to be in a particular state of mind. And now this is being understood in, in physiological terms, not just in psychological terms, right? So before we used to say, oh, a certain personality type is drawn to hate or drawn to the politics of hate. That is not true. We are all drawn to those politics if we are in the right state of mind. And what is that state of mind? That state of mind is the fight or flight state. That fight or flight state is associated and it's something that's very necessary for human survival. If we see a bear or if we see a tiger, we, need, we don't want to reason with a tiger. We don't want to say, Kibai, not tasty nehu, yaar, mujhe, mujhe mat khao. that's not going to help you, right? You're going to have to run away from the tiger or you're going to have to fight the tiger or maybe you can play, play dead, right? So fight, flight, or freeze is another way to talk about this. And another way to talk about this is the distinction between the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. So the parasympathetic nervous system is where we should be spending most of our time. It's where we should be relaxing, talking with our friends, not being anxious at all. When we get too anxious, we kick in the sympathetic nervous system, right? And that is where the fight or flight stuff happens. And now we understand that, so here I put in the slide, all the things that happen physiologically, you have basically, you can't digest, you, um, many, many different things happen when you are in this sympathetic state. But one of the things that happens psychologically is you cannot have an argument, you cannot have a discussion. And this is why you cannot have a reasoned discussion. You cannot have a calm discussion. And this is why using humor is such an important tool, because you will never be able to convince someone <laughs> by giving philosophical arguments, by, you know, this is what the Quran says, this is what the Hadith says, or whatever it may be, whatever your argument may be, you will never convince anyone. But if you can uh, make that person laugh, if you can make that person laugh at themselves, especially, you might be able to put them in a state where they can actually begin to have that discussion with you. And we can't go into details of this psychology as well as physiology here, uh, uh, because we have limited time, but you're welcome to attend one of our workshops on the psychology of hate. Uh, the next one is on the 19th. Uh, do you know anyone who hates Muslims? That's on the 19th. True, but that one is, is mostly for our audience in Australia. So it may be difficult just with time zones okay. for people to so we'll let here, you know. If we'll let you know yeah, in the next yeah, one. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, the next one is, um, so I've already given the example of the emotional reasons. The song was how we, 
appeal um, to use humor. That was a funny song. Um, how we use humor to undermine these emotional reasons, right? So you're you're building yourself up, but you know, do you have a job? Asking this question, right? The second uh, thing that we wanted to address was just how misinformation spreads and how that can be counter. So here is a very short excerpt of a skit um, with someone having a debate with a, a Modi Bhakt about the Indian economy. The thing is that we are world power now. We have everything, bullet train, world-class malls, smart cities. Where is all that? Where is all that? On our WhatsApp group, Modi hai to mumkin hai. We see pics of India's great development every day. Man, we look like Switzerland. Modi, 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 Modi. Okay, wait, wait. Switzerland is number two in human development index. India is 131. Keep your JNU figures to yourself. The world has accepted Modi ji as the best leader in the world. United Nations has declared it and called India a world power. No, it hasn't. The Human Development Index is by the United Nations only. It is not created by JNU. Oh, oh well, mm, at least we are better than Pakistan. Should we not compare ourselves with China or other countries that are better? If we have so many problems with Modi ji, why don't you just go to Pakistan? Bharat Mata ki jai, Modi ji ki jai. You think Papu can do it? Congress always has its agenda of defaming Modi ji, Pakistani dalal. What's wrong with you? Why are you even talking about Congress or Pakistan? Modi had promised so many economic things that he has not delivered. Where is that 15 lakh he promised for everyone? Where are the jobs he promised? Where is that low price of petrol and cooking gas? Well, I don't have to answer you. I'm only answerable to Modi ji, who depends on my loyalty. You are a part of that Tukde Tukde gang. It is people like you who are destroying India. Modi, 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 Modi. <laughs> so uh, that was an excerpt uh, from a skit that Peace Vigil volunteers did. In fact, if you want to watch the whole thing, it's a series called Mouth Open, Logic Shut. And we have four uh, episodes already. We are thinking of doing this in Hindi and possibly in Marathi. Uh, now, I want to draw a distinction between humor and humor with a message. So a lot of people do humorous things. You know, as we know, the internet is flooded with humorous things. Uh, some of it is slapstick also. Some of it is that stand-up comedy, you know, the usual stuff. But that doesn't actually change things. You can make fun without having the agenda of changing things. But in our case, we try to change things. And I'll tell you, um, you know, this conversation I had with uh, Ravish Kumar that many of you know and you've heard him. He told me a couple of years ago that, you know, Shireen, actually people have started realizing that they supported the wrong guy and the wrong party. But it is human tendency not to be able to admit it. You know, who will say, yeah, I'm a Bevakuf, you know, I, I supported the wrong person. So Ravish Kumar said, we have to find ways by which people who have realized they supported the wrong person or a fanatic, uh, you know, fascist organization, even they can admit, oh, yeah, I was wrong. Let me do something to change it. So our programs, even the humorous ones are designed for that. It's not about just making fun. So this particular excerpt we showed you, uh, we are going to show you what happens after that. We'll uh, we have a little bit, uh, just a little bit of commentary, a few seconds that brings to uh, light, you know, that stupidity. And so the person who's looking, even if it's a bhakt, is looking at this video and looking at himself and saying, oh yeah, that's me, or looking at herself and say, yeah, that's me. How could I be so stupid? Let me do something about it, but without being preachy. So we'll tell you how we do it. Let's, let's play that. Sometimes it happens. We end up following the wrong guy or the wrong path. It is hard to admit when we were wrong, but it is self-destructive to continue being part of something that we have discovered was not right. We all make mistakes. Let's not continue to make them because of ego or embarrassment. 
Let's not help the dishonest use us and manipulate us. It's all right to use our brains. We all have one. <laughs> so that is the way we approach the topic without telling anybody, oh, you know, what did you do? Why did you do it? It's just a short message. That is then followed by a song that I will sing for you. And this one is in Hindi, but um, we also do in other languages in uh, you know, obviously in English, but we've started working now a little bit in French and Punjabi and Gujarati. So I'm going to sing this for you. Uh, this follows after the skit and after the message. Tere raj ka khatma chahta hoon Tujhe phir na de Me yehi chahta hoon तेरे राज का खात्मा चाहता हूँ तुझे फिर न देखूं मैं यही चाहता हूँ तेरे राज का धक्के तो से जाने की विने मांगते हो धक्के तो से जाने की विने मांगते हो बड़े न समझ हो ये क्या मांगते हो बड़े ना समझ हो तेरे झूठे वादों पे दुनिया बसा के तेरी झूठी कसमों से सपने सजा के मेरा तो लूटा सब कुछ तेरी वजह से सब कुछ तेरी वजह से मैं तुझसे हमेशा की मैं तुझसे हमेशा की विदा चाहता हूँ तुझे फिर न देखूँ मैं यही चाहता हूँ तेरे राज का डकैतों से जाने की विनय मांगते हो डकैतों से जाने की विनय मांगते हो बड़े ना समझ हो ये क्या मांगते हो बड़े ना समझ हो so we combine drama song a little bit of speech on message and that's how we do it so now we are going to move to the next uh, point in our presentation. So this one is, is interesting, isn't it? Because uh, it's hard to think in any country, um, it's hard to think of politicians who aren't, for example, corrupt um, and who don't want, for example, when Narendra Modi came to power, he talked about uh, eliminating black money and he implemented this crazy policy, which uh, we would know about called demonetization, right? Now, how does one actually campaign on this issue? It's a difficult question. So one thing that we have to do and that we do do in our YouTube channel is we you have to do detailed analysis with experts. So we have economist uh, Jethi Ghosh came and she gave us you know one, one and a half hour, maybe two hour lecture on exactly what the impact of demonetization was for ordinary people. Now that's important, but just like no one, not everyone is gonna read a book not everyone is gonna to listen to a 90 minute lecture. So that's where the importance of storytelling really comes in. Because through the power of storytelling, one can really illustrate the points that uh, someone like Jayati Ghosh is making in her talk on economics. One can really boil it down into some of the key points. In a humorous. In a humorous yeah. and in a very, um, a very human kind of way. Yeah. So that's the next one we're gonna do. This one is called Kale Goronka Amar Kata, which is the immortal story of the black horses for those who don't speak and we do have english subtitles because we try to be bilingual in this we won't play the whole thing uh, only a part of it yes mantri mantri samne aaya ji huzur munadi karao aaj raat se 12 baje ke baad ghode ban hue आज रात 12 बजे के बाद किसी को भी घोड़ा चलाने की अनुमति नहीं है। अब हर घोड़े को 
हमारे अस्तबल में पहुंचाना जनता के लिए अनिवार्य है जनता का कर्तव्य है कि वो काले घोड़े ढूंढने में अपने कर्मठ राजा की मदद करे चौकीदार ने डरते हुए बोला माई बाप घोड़े तो सिर्फ काले ही चोरी हुए हैं सब घोड़ों को जमा करने की क्या जरूरत है माई बाप खामोश राजा ने कहा चोरों की फितरत मुझसे ज्यादा कोई नहीं समझता जो भी काले घोड़े ले गया है उसने अब तक उनका रंग बदल दिया होगा बेवकूफ सब घोड़ों पर सफेद रंग पोत दिया होगा इसलिए जरूरी है कि हम सब घोड़ों को जमा करके उन्हें धोए हर घोड़ा धोया जाए मंत्री ने तुरंत कहा वाह सर क्या सोच है क्या आइडिया है सर मैं तो सर कायल हो गया आपका सर हमारे राज्य की हिस्ट्री में सर ऐसा कमाल कोई नहीं कर पाया सर कोई नहीं कर पाया राजा ने कहा वो तो है तुम देखना कितनी आसानी से हम घोड़े ढूंढ लेंगे मंत्री ने कहा सर बस एक समस्या है सर प्रजा की लाइफ कैसे चलेगी सर मतलब लोग तो कहीं जा नहीं पाएंगे बिना घोड़े के कहीं आना जाना बंद हो गया सर तो तो सर सब कुछ ठप नहीं हो जाएगा सर राजा ने झल्ला कर कहा अरे तुम्हें कुछ पता नहीं है जनता की समस्याओं को मुझसे ज्यादा कोई नहीं समझता मैंने सब सोचकर ही निर्णय लिया है जैसे जैसे घोड़े धुलते जाएंगे लोगों को साफ घोड़े मिलते जाएंगे बस कुछ ही दिनों की बात है मंत्री ने तुरंत कहा वाह सर वाह कमाल हो गया सर सर मैं तो आपका फैन हो गया सर मैं तो आपका मुरीद हो गया आपसे ज्यादा महान आदमी आज तक पैदा नहीं हुआ राजा ने कहा वो तो है कहानी का अंत ये हुआ सब घोड़े जमा हो गए अब लोग इंतजार करने लगे कि कब उन्हें साफ किए घोड़े वापस मिलेंगे और कब काले घोड़े अस्तबल में वापस आएंगे और कब चोर पकड़े जाएंगे सरकारी ऐलान में तो कहा गया था कि कुछ ही दिन की बात है दिन हफ्तों में हफ्ते महीनों में और महीने साल में बदल गए काले घोड़े भी नहीं मिले और लोगों को अपने घोड़े वापस पाने में इतनी मुश्किल हुई कि पूछो मत सरकारी अस्तबल में घोड़ों की सफाई हो ही नहीं पा रही थी कभी साबुन खत्म हो जाता था तो कभी पानी की कमी हो जाती थी और तो और अस्तबल के गेट का साइज घोड़ों के साइज से छोटा था है ना मुसीबत अंत में हुआ ये कि कुछ नहीं हुआ पता ये चला कि काले घोड़े तो देश के बाहर जा चुके हैं काले घोड़े चोरी करने वालों के नाम भी पता चल गए पर उन्हें पकड़ा नहीं जा सका आप सुन रहे थे काले घोड़ों की अमर कथा आपको पसंद आई हो तो लाइक सब्सक्राइब और कमेंट जरूर कीजिएगा धन्यवाद राजा ने बजाया बाजा राजा ने बजाया बाजा राजा ने बजाया बाजा घोड़ों को बैन किया था घोड़ों को बैन किया था घोड़ों को बैन किया था काले घोड़ों की खातिर काले घोड़ों की खातिर काले घोड़ों की खातिर और हाथ में क्या आया फिर और हाथ में क्या आया फिर और हाथ में क्या आया फिर अंडा 
So uh, that was an example of <laughs> storytelling. Uh, thank you for liking it. Um, if you want to watch the whole uh, thing and you want to watch similar programs, all you have to do is go to YouTube. It's a free channel. It's called uh, Peace Vigil. You can see that I in the in the slide, it says Peace Needs All of Us. That's the channel. It's a free channel. Uh, now uh, we'll come to the point that Sami lightly touched, which is to uh, we are taught to hate as a cultural norm. And unfortunately, that's the reality, even with religious education, that the way religion is taught is often about our way is the best, you know, and their way is not good. And, you know, it's not deserving of respect. Um, it's the same with skin color. It's the same with caste that, you know, the others are inferior. We are superior. What is really sad about the situation is when we start to think that the other person, because he or she is different, deserves to be punished, you see, or deserves to be killed. That is going one step farther from just saying my way is better. You know, it's to, it's to say the other person actually deserves to be killed for eating something different or praying in a different manner or, you know, so on. So I'm going to play a little clip about a very serious subject uh, called lynching in India, as you know, over beef. People have uh, died over the years because uh, they were suspected of eating beef. Now, we wanted to do it in a way that is humorous without uh, leaving the seriousness of the subject. So I'll play a very short clip of a documentary we did called What Are You Eating? It's in Hindi also on our, uh, on our channel. This is the English version. Though. This is the English version, yeah. On my daily evening walk, my neighbor, who's also my friend, may tell me that the family in number nine eats carrots. What a disgusting family, I might think. How can they eat carrots? I may have my own reasons for thinking that carrot eating is absolutely wrong. So, I tell my kids not to play with the kids from number nine. Every time I see the family from number nine, I make faces. And I also tell everyone in the neighborhood about them. I then raise the issue in the resident association. Number nine should change or number nine must leave. Do we have the right to decide for others what they should eat? So again, this is all available uh, on our YouTube channel. I'll encourage people to go and, and check that out. Um, so this was the, the fourth reason that we had discussed. So talking about hate as a cultural norm. Um, the next thing we'd like to talk about is this issue of historical fabrication. So what happens is, you know, those in power. So again, we're picking on India because that's uh, one of the countries that we focus on, but one could talk about the slogan, make America great again, or something like this, right? There is this false idea of the past that certain kinds of leaders promote. And if we don't educate ourselves, then we may be susceptible to those attacks, right? So uh, some of you may remember that a couple of years ago, there was this controversy around this movie. The movie was going to be called Padmavati. Then it ended up being called uh, Padmavat. Mm -hmm. um, so it was written by someone called Jaisi. Jaisi um, and it was about this King Kilji. Uh, and so the Kilji dynasty, which had finished two and a half centuries before uh, <laughs> Jaisi wrote this piece, um, and it was about this um, fictional character called Padmavati. So we had been reading and, and we've interviewed uh, Harbans Mukia for our channel as well. So we have a long interview with Harbans Mukia on a number of issues related to this. Um, but we read his essay at the time and we thought this is great. So again, he, he'd written maybe a 3000 word essay. Now, how many people are going to read that 3000 word essay? It was a very fantastic piece. And I know some of you on this, uh, uh, you know, on this Zoom call may remember it. But to be honest, not many people are going to read that. So we thought, how can we translate this um, in a way that people will understand? And uh, uh, Samir, I just want to quickly um, uh, welcome a little baby, um, you know, on the webinar. Okay. Um, hello, baby. You are with uh, Zainuddin Kadri Sahab. Uh, Salam alaikum, beta. How are you? Um, Yes, you know, in our education circles, uh, we are always delighted to have children. So thank you so much for joining. 
And we're going to talk a little bit about how to work with children uh, just in a minute. Yeah. So, you know, just just a crux is that this thing that we're going to play is about this, this whole controversy where they said that the queen and the king, Alauddin Hilji and Padmavati, it was a movie about them. But Hilji was two and a half, about two and a half centuries before this poem was written in which Padmavati took birth, basically, you know, but, but people were fighting and killing over it. And the RSS made such a big deal that they had to, um, they had to go through, I don't know if people, people remember this, but they had to touch up so that the midriff was not being seen in the Saudi, you know, yes. this is the kind of, yes. the kind of issues that they were raising. Yes. Anyway, let's listen. So this is a kind of theater where one actor, Shirin, will be playing both the interviewer and Rani Padmati, Padma, Padmavati. Padmavati. Yeah. So let's take a look. This is ridiculous. We didn't even exist until 1540. That is 237 years after the siege of Chittor. So uh, the dates are wrong by 237 years. Yes. Are you sure? Because we are sure. We are a famous character from a famous ballad or epic poem as it's sometimes called. Do you think we wouldn't know when we were created? <laughs> so, you know, this is also in Hindi as well. And uh, it's one of our most popular videos uh, because, you know, there's so much drama and funniness in it. Um, we are going to go to the next thing now, uh, which is about children. I want to specifically talk about children. Uh, what often happens is that children and young adults, we forget. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we can't actually move forward. You know, we all, of course, uh, you know, have a connection with India or Pakistan. But what about the young generation uh, that is growing up in the West, you know, was born there? How do we connect with them? And humor is actually one of the ways we should do it. But most of our programs are not geared to include the young adults and children. And it's, it's a very sad reality because after us, they are the ones who are going to take the fight of democracy, not only in India, but elsewhere, you know, all over the world. And for that, I would say that we have to look at their realities and make programs according to their realities. So kids who are growing up in the West, uh, for them, for instance, racism is a very big issue. So if we can include that in our analysis of communalism, we have a common ground because they're both apartheids. And we, you know, we need to find that common ground. Secondly, I'd like to say that, you know, whatever happens when it comes to bigotry and prejudice, it impacts them also. We all know the case that has happened in, uh, in Canada. Unfortunately, that nine-year-old child, we all know about him. What the, you know, he's, he's in a very critical state. So, you know, we, we often I find that in, in circles where we are discussing issues, we don't bring children. We don't bring women. Uh, very rarely, like Razi Sahab ke saath hamesha I have seen, you know, uh, both of you come. Um, uh, and, you know, it's, it's great that I see you. But most people don't involve their families. And it's a very sad thing. Perhaps the reason for that is also the way we are structuring the programs. You know, how many children and young adults are going to sit through an hour and a half lecture? It's not going to happen. But... When bigotry happens, when prejudice happens, when violence happens because of it, the children are also impacted. So let us not shelter them too much. We have to expose them to these things in a, in a child appropriate, in, a, in an age appropriate manner. So I'm going to give you three quick clips of, uh, uh, we are not going to talk about young adults right now because of the uh, you know time limit. I'm just going to show you two clips of uh, programs that we designed, uh, keeping in mind children born outside of India. They see children, but it can apply to anybody. And last one is for children in India. And they are all done in a bit of a humorous way. What you will see, I really want you to, to, you know, uh, uh, to notice this, is that this is a program anyone can watch. You know, it's not just for children, puri family bed ke. Uh, the whole family can sit and watch it and enjoy it. So let's let's look at it. Today, in stories from our neighborhood, we have Nile waters for learners of all ages. The Nile, along with the Amazon, is one of the longest rivers in the world. To give you an idea of how long it is, 
It can cover the entire length of the United States and most of Canada. Now this is very long. Pan means all. Chia means Mother Earth or life. So Pangea means the whole Earth or all of life. Did you know that the continents are still moving? So the city that you are in right now may not always be where it is. It may move to another country or even continent. It's a bit unsettling. I mean, imagine waking up to find out that your country has drifted away to join another continent. You were American or European last night, and today you're African. That changes things, doesn't it? This is the second one. Mama, kahani time. Oh yes, kahani time. Aaj ki kahani hai chidiyon ka peed. Chidiyon ka peed. इन आलसी और पूरी तरह सेल्फिश चिड़ियाओं का नाम था दादा और गिरी क्योंकि मेहनत करना उनके बस की बात थी नहीं और ऐश की चाहत उनको पूरी थी तो दूसरी चिड़ियाओं का दाना चुराने का काम करती थी वो दादा और गिरी के अलावा कुछ चिड़ियाएं ऐसी भी थी जो दूसरों का खाना मक्कारी या जिसे फरेब कहते हैं उससे ले लेती थी उनका नाम था रिल्ला और अड्डा वो धोखे से दूसरों का दाना अपने घोंसले में भर लेती थी और उनके घोंसले अब इतने बड़े थे इतने आलिशान कि नजर चौंधिया जाए कई मंजिला घोंसले थे उनके रिल्ला और अड्डा कई बुरे काम करते थे जैसे कोई चिड़िया बीमार हुई तो वो फौरन उसके पास पहुंच जाते थे कहते थे लो लो ये दाना रखो तुम्हें तो खाने की जरूरत है जब ठीक हो जाओगी तो वापस कर देना बस याद रखना कि हम चार गुना वापस लेते हैं लो यहां साइन करो दादा गिरी रिल्ला और अड्डा में खूब दोस्ती होने लगी होती भी क्यों नहीं चोर चोर मौसेरे भाई सो यू नो आई एम श्योर दैट यू बीन एबल टू गेस हु द दादा इज हु द गिरी इज द टू पॉलिटिशियंस हु रिल्ला एंड अड्डा आर रिल्ला एंड अड्डा you know and and you know that's what we are we are trying to do so somebody wrote here that you know i i love the the um the metaphors you use horses and carrots and you know we need to understand that's that's about our religion our stories our history you know we present things in a creative manner koi seedha nahi bolte ek aadmi aaya usne kisi ko mara wo khad gir gaya fir wo no we use magic we use uh, metaphors we we use nature and that's how we we give our message so you know again this sto whole story is there it also has thousands of views you can go and watch it do subscribe to our channel please it really helps us peace vigil and now i'd like to give you a glimpse of how we do our work so this is of course a webinar but i want to show you that when you use humor storytelling quizzes because we do a lot of quizzes you know when you do role play when you do drama the audience lights up you know it's no longer boring for people the children come the women come the elderly come and they stay there for 2 hours and they get involved in the exercises we do so let me show you just we have many clips and i have only chosen a few just to show you so let's let's have a look
Hispanic, American, father. So, you know, now tell me one thing. Is there something that struck you? Were you expecting something in the in the in these words that identify people that you didn't see here? Dependable. Dependable. Yes, they're all off the mark. <laughs> as what they are and uh, well it absolutely proves what you have been saying that you know they're all ones and thank you you have encapsulated the exercise you know right at the beginning morena bulu kasi chaba sa hesu o veri twadin twali maswene ho usi bulu ke o si bulu ke si chaba sa Hesu si chabasa South Africa South Africa Right We have togetherness we have celebration Uh, you could see how these uh, in-person trainings or we call them peace circles do there are all sorts of people there you know they're older people younger people children uh, they're men and women they are black people white people brown people and I think that is how it should be we have made the whole thing about learning about politics and about important issues so elitist you know that people are actually scared of them the role of people like us Samir and I is to translate those very complex subjects in a language that reaches out to a wide variety you know a diverse variety and sometimes that that means that we have various things it's not just one thing that will appeal so we'd like to conclude now by just uh, recapping what we did. One is that humor is certainly a great medicine. Samir explained to you why we need humor in if we are going to fight this menace of bigotry and prejudice. We actually, from a psychological point, we need that. Again, I, I tell you that we do workshops. We can't go into detail today. You're welcome to join. The, the email is info at peacevigil.net. So humor is certainly a great medicine. The second thing is that, you know, uh, you can be 
humorous but that doesn't mean that you are taking the message across humorous wale bahut se there are many people doing work that is funny they even have political jokes in it but it has to be done in a way uh, a trained way so we are trained to do it so that the message gets across and people understand that okay oh yeah you know that is weird that is funny and i'm part of this whole thing i'm causing this problem ha 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 yeah that's me hey i better change myself i'm rather stupid in this but without being preachy then understanding of an issue is different from communicating it so for instance we can read arundhati roy we have understood it great we have read chomsky we have understood it great but not everyone's going to read it so how do you communicate those understandings you know those observations that you have accumulated through your reading to others the way to do it is to find creative ways not everyone wants to read a book not everyone wants to attend a long lecture that doesn't mean those things are not important but they are not going to make a community large enough to push back against hate and violence and bigotry for that community to be made we need to get creative we need to use humor and the other things like pathos you know that we are not talking about today but that also uh, then diversity of techniques so you know we showed you several examples storytelling drama song quizzes in that one of the the clips we showed you about a a peace circle in somebody's house uh, we that was a quiz you know quiz happening then in university of maryland where we were showing there was uh, an exercise we were doing an exercise a peace education exercise and you will also see that we we not only have diversity of techniques but we change we adapt ourselves to wherever we are koi apne ghar pe bulata hai people do these peace circles in their homes we have to do it in their home it's a classroom we do it in a classroom the last video where the uh, you know it it was in south africa black white brown people singing together that was in a restaurant so we have to go and change ourselves and be the best educators we can the easiest thing to do is for me to sit here say a lecture 50 log sunenge good you know i have put effort in the lecture but not any effort into reaching out and reaching out means i have to become less elitist and go there where people are in a language that they can understand in a space maybe somebody's house where they will come comfortably so and then um use resources that are specifically designed to educate so what happens is like you may come to me and say acha shirin all that is fine but i can't make a documentary like this i can't make a play like this for that there are channels that you can copy the url send to others so like peace visual channel is free so use the use of resources that are there uh, to educate then lastly i would say learn how to intervene okay this is very important very very important so samir mentioned in the beginning how many of us have had um uh, you know confrontations on facebook and you know where it doesn't work it's because like anything else communication also needs to be learned and communication i don't mean in an office space or something i mean peace education communication and what you it will do is if you attend workshops that are designed for that is that you will realize that this is a discipline you know it needs to be learned it's an it's it's a whole set of things that one can learn to become more effective humor is one of them but there are others as well and um, actually the last thing i want to say is please open your spaces this i would like to reiterate make them less elitist uh, we saw examples you know make make aim at making and nourishing communities you see you will never be able to change modi sorry to say this but you can't change modi you can't change um you know amit shah that's not possible we can change people who are on the fence we can also change uh, a few people who are die hard bhaks maybe but you know what the real task is the real task is to actually build a community from on this side of the fence we don't have that community we don't have people who are not there are people who are not bad there are people who agree with what we are saying but they don't come out to support us and that's the real task to build a community on this side of the fence which is strong enough to stand up 
and for that we do need peace education from childhood wherever we can so that's where i think we will end um no 100% that's the, it's all about building community i think we all agree or we should all agree and we can talk more about that in the question and answer yeah. but before ending you mentioned uh, the word pathos and uh, i think we can see that as two sides of the same coin mm-hmm. so in urdu we can say yeah, uh, if we're talking about jokes that sort of is one yeah. side khushi and then udasi uh, and that huh. can also have a certain kind of power yeah so i wonder if you could uh, present one song or oh, just po- as an example as an example okay, of okay yeah sure so we, we i'll just do a short song um this one is by ali sardar jafri it's called kon azad hua this is just to introduce to you that like sami said that humor is just one part of what we can use in peace education the other is uh, pathos for example so it's ali sardar jafri's nazm kon azad hua and i'll sing a little bit कौन आजाद हुआ कौन आजाद हुआ किसके माथे से सियाही छूटी मेरे सीने में अभी दर्द है महकूमी का मादरे हिंद के चेहरे पे उदासी है वो ही कौन आजाद हुआ कौन आजाद हुआ खंजर आजाद है सीने में उतरने के लिए मौत आजाद है लाशों पे गुजरने के लिए कौन आजाद हुआ कौन आजाद हुआ किसके माथे से सिया ही छूटी मेरे सीने में अभी दर्द है महकूमी का मादरे हिंद के चेहरे पे उदासी है वो ही कौन आजाद हुआ कौन आजाद हुआ यू वर लिसनिंग टू अ प्रेजेंटेशन बाय पीस विजिल पीस विजिल वर्क्स ऑन पीस एजुकेशन If you'd like to participate in any of our workshops or trainings or if you'd like to arrange for a workshop or training for your own group or organization write to us on info@peacevigil.net Peace Vigil is a peace education organization and we believe peace needs all of us